I think most of us can agree CrossFit is not the most entertaining sport you could watch, and especially for non-CrossFitters. CrossFit can be predictable yet hard to follow, while also being extremely repetitive at times. I have identified a few things that CrossFit as a sport could implement to make it more interesting for casuals and loyal fans alike. Because of the situation with CrossFit's media team, I will be talking about things I think could be done with little to no increase in media. Here are a few things CrossFit needs more of. This is unbelievable. Look at them, look at each other. They know exactly what's happening right now. And both of them are probably shocked to see each other in first. Froning in front. Troyan still looking at Froning. The two of them taking a break. Here comes Marcus Hendry to the chalk bucket. One rope plan to go in this heat. Look at him, he's waiting. He was waiting to see what Rich was going to do, and then it was a race to go up to the top. He watched him the whole time. Troyan is first, but Hendrick dives across the finish line, and now Froning is in. We'll have to see who gets the win. This moment is awesome. Seeing these guys get to the rope at the same time and start gaming the workout, looking at each other to see who's going to hop up onto the rope first is great. It's high energy and high stakes. Jump up first and maybe too early and you will fail a rope climb and get passed by a bunch of other guys and lose valuable points. Jump up too late and everyone might already be out of reach. And balancing this makes for an interesting race. These types of moments are exciting and fun to watch. But what made this moment happen and why does it feel like we don't get many of them at the CrossFit Games? Well, what made this moment happen is each legless rope climb rep is a huge commitment because you have to get all the way to the top to get credit for one. And with the huge commitment for one rep, what you see is athletes trying to balance the way their body feels and if they are ready to go up yet with the timing of the other athletes in the field. This is an example of the first thing I would like to see more of at the CrossFit Games, and that is unbroken requirements on movements during workouts. Now I know one legless rope climb is not multiple reps, but in a way it is an unstated unbroken requirement because you only get credit for the rep if you make it all the way to the top. You don't get credit for accumulating pulls on the rope. If you start a legless, you have to finish it. CrossFit events need more of these requirements that can be applied to any and all movements that are being tested. Who doesn't love to see shifts in the leaderboard and who doesn't love to see high stakes moments with unpredictability. This is what as a viewer I feel CrossFit can be missing at times. Midway through the workout you're rarely going to see drastic shifts in the placements of athletes like someone going from last in their heat to first by the end of the event. Smaller shifts happen but big shifts seem to be much less common. Adding unbroken requirements not only tests the athlete's capacity but it gives the fans an opportunity to watch exciting all or nothing moments and it also paves the way for potentially larger shifts in placements during the event. For example on second cut from the 2019 CrossFit Games, there was a requirement placed on the handstand walk portion of that event. Athletes had to complete a 132 foot handstand walk, but were required to do it in three 42 foot unbroken segments. Brent Fikowski was on track to finish in third place, but after failing right at the end of his last 42 foot section, he had to go back and restart. 11 people passed him in his heat and he ended up finishing 17th place in this event. This one misstep ended up costing Fikowski 14 spots on the leaderboard and 28 points. With those 28 points, he would not have gotten cut the next day like he did. The requirement to do this unbroken had a huge impact on the competition. This style of unbroken requirement could be used for squats, thrusters, snatches, pull-ups, muscle-ups, literally anything that could be done unbroken. And yet unbroken requirements have been almost used exclusively for movements where athletes are covering horizontal distance like a handstand walk or a lunge. Out of 197 workouts over the last 17 years at the CrossFit Games, there has only been any sort of unbroken requirement on 14 workouts. And every single one was distance related. There has never been an unbroken requirement on a four reps movement. And most seem like they have been pretty inconsequential or too small to make any impact on the outcome of the event. Seeing more unbroken requirements on a broader range of movements and tests is one way to add high risk versus reward component to each individual event and increase viewer engagement. And at least, if we could create more moments like this, I would be happy. Now what if we took unbroken requirements a step further and instead of making the athlete restart the set, they had to pay some sort of penalty for breaking. This has been done once before. In 2014 at the CrossFit Games there was an event called the Muscle Up Biathlon and the event went like this. But the catch was anytime they broke on the ring muscle ups before they had finished the set, they had a 200 meter penalty lap. When they got back from their penalty, they did not have to restart the set they were currently on, they could just go through with finishing it. And this workout gave us a very interesting moment that set the stages for one of Rich Froning's 
signature Sunday comebacks. Josh Bridges had been up in the lead for almost the whole workout leading up to the last set. He then had to break his muscle ups and so he was off on his penalty run. The camera switches to Rich Froning. He's now in second place in the heat and only has a few more ring muscle ups left. It starts looking like he's going to have one of the top scores in this event. And then he has to break with one more muscle up left, which of course the camera missed. Rich Froning takes off on his 200 meter penalty lap and all of a sudden seven athletes finish while Rich is paying his penalty. From what looked like it was going to be a top five finish all the way down to 13th in just an instant. His misstep of being one muscle up short didn't just cost him one or two spots on this event's leaderboard, but seven. Penalty workouts are entertaining and have their place in testing fitness. It takes elite level pacing and it makes the stakes high. We also get to see athletes push themselves to the absolute limit. So why has this penalty format only ever been done once at the CrossFit Games? As you can see by now, the theme here is that the most engaging things to watch are do or die moments where you don't know what's going to happen next. Which brings us to the next thing I would like to see more of, elimination style events. Start with the full field of athletes and as the workout progresses, people get eliminated. Because they are facing elimination, we see athletes have to put it all on the line even in the beginning of the workout. And in the later rounds, since we aren't watching 20 to 40 athletes work out all at the same time, it can really highlight the few athletes that have moved on. This is really one of the big ways we were introduced to Guy Malieros. In 2021, the Max Snatch event was an elimination event. It started with a full field and as the weights went up, the field whittled down to just Guy and Royce Dunn. This is when Guy hit that huge 305 pound snatch with ease and won the event. A huge electric moment. And that's what elimination style events give us. Elimination events have been responsible for creating some of the best moments ever at the CrossFit Games. The clean ladder from 2019 is elimination style event and so is the sandbag ladder from 2022. But this event format doesn't have to only be applied to max lifts. In the past few years we have seen what seems to be a small emergence of elimination events on non-max lift workouts. For the last three years at the Rogue Invitational they have had a bracket style elimination elimination event each year, the duels 1, 2, and 3, and these have been extremely exciting to watch each time. They create high stakes moments in the early rounds and high light moments in the later rounds. These three workout formats are responsible for a lot of the most iconic, memorable, and entertaining moments in CrossFit Games history, yet they seem to be few and far between. At the CrossFit Games in the last 17 years, any of these three workout formats that I just mentioned only account for 26 of 197 total events. And of those 26, most were sadly fairly insignificant to the outcome of the event. Simple AMRAP and four-time workouts are great, but more variety could be added to the programming with some of these small details I have just talked about. It would make some of these events more fun to watch for viewers and put more of an emphasis on execution. It's a great way to continue to grow the sport at the highest level and challenge athletes with the constantly varied aspects of CrossFit that we've all come to love. CrossFit needs more of these. Make the stakes high and make things less predictable. Do you think we will see any of these formats this year at the CrossFit Games? And if so, what ways would you like to see them used? Let me know in the comments below and thank you for watching.